you are thinking about a change in careers, you're going to want to meet this author. She is the author of Unleash Your Career Potential, Carla Blanco. Hello. Hello. So, Carla, Unleash Your Career Potential, Seven Steps to Living Your Dream. Tell us about your book. Thank you, Angela, and thank you, Tim, the author incubator, for having all of us here. Uh, my book, it is a consolidation of 20 years of experience. We all know face many challenges. We all face uh, reorganizations. We face losses in our personal lives. And, but we are also surrounded by amazing leaders. So what I did, it is to consolidate my learnings there on a seven-step process. It's so powerful. So Alma from Texas wants to know, and you have a full-time job. So I think a lot of you are picturing all these authors alone in the cabin typing with, you know, a year to themselves to type. This was not what was happening for Carla. Uh, she work in a full-time job. And Alma from Texas wants to know how much time do you need to devote and commit in writing, uh, uh, commit to writing and finishing the book? So how much time was this process for you? Nine weeks, as you stated in the program. It was, for me, hard to believe. But definitely, in my case, because we are all unique in that sense, I focus on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. So my family was a great support mm. on that. My parents were visiting from Costa Rica, and my son was there. So it, during the weekends of nine weeks, and it became a family project. <laughs> but here's the thing. A, a lot of people go into writing the book, and they think they're going to work on their book until it's finished. Like, they don't think, how could I set the end date? I don't know how long it's going to take to write. So maybe it's a year, maybe it's two years. It's super hard to enroll your mom, your spouse, your kids in a project that's going to go on for a mystery amount of time. But you knew when you started, it was nine weeks. It wasn't necessarily going to be the most fun weekends your family ever had for nine weeks. But do you think having that, like, end date made it easy for everyone to get behind you? Definitely. The whole process, Angela, I, from the beginning, how you structure everything and how you make us focus really helps. Mm. All right, let's take another question. Kimberly from Houston, Texas. We're going all around Texas today. It's a Texas tour. Kimberly from Houston says, how do I know what I'm writing will help others? I have so many doubts. My story feels insignificant. How do I overcome this? Well, definitely that's something that we all faced. And again, that process really helped me because myself and many other authors, we think about writing about something, but you get crystal clear throughout the process, just through the questions that you make to us and focusing on the ideal reader and what is meaningful for them. Just connecting from a servant heart will make you write the right book. Mm -hmm. Love that. Great. And Carmen Murillo from Westchester, Illinois asks, do I need excellent writing skills? I'm going to take that to the next level too. I I don't think it'll surprise a lot of people watching this interview. English is not your first language, but our editors only speak English. Thereby, uh, you actually didn't just write this book. You wrote the book in English. So can you talk about how you felt about your writing skills and how good you think someone's writing skills need to be? How important is that? That was one of my gremlins when they come. And uh, well, of course, as you can see, English is not my first language, but having an amazing editor, uh, Bethany, really helped me to get that and done and in a good shape. Yeah, and a proof uh, and a proofreader too. Yeah, a good proofreader you need. <laughs> um, but I think even more important is like tackling that gremlin voice, like because I think I, we have a lot of authors that do have English as a second language, and they have this story like, oh, it's going to be harder for me, and you know the proofreading is definitely harder, but getting the thoughts out is ninety percent of it. Like we have editors who can clean up grammar, but the thoughts we can't pull them out of you, you know, like you have to be able to share those. And so I think a lot of the fears that people have about not being a good writer, we've had people in the program with dyslexia, other learning abilities, we've had people who are blind. Um, and so those thoughts are the same. Like for you, you're just like, oh, it's because English is my second language. For someone else, it's because I have dyslexia, um, whatever. So how, 
How did you and how did the program help you manage those voices of maybe I'm just not a good enough writer? Well, you have a process in place for that. Uh, and I really was amazed by the meditation at the beginning on mm -hmm. how to connect with your center and how to keep coming back to your ideal reader. In my case, my mentees and coaches from Latin America were my inspiration and just keeping connected with them really helped me to get all the information through. What's one tip from your book you would want to share with somebody who was not 